Okay, so let's do our quick practices for lessons one through four. Boys and girls, let's focus on the pink box first. Boys and girls, read with me. Now, I can use the pointer and they would all read this one with me. I can also use an external pointer. So um, I have one that's called pointer focus that was actually free on the internet. Um, and I'm gonna use this one. So let's read it together. Boys and girls, 16 equals three times five plus D. Think about it. Show with your fingers and they would be showing with their fingers what D equals. So in this case, they should be putting up one finger. And then the student leader would say, class, 16 equals three times five plus one. Class, read it with me. 19 equals three times five plus D. Think about it. All the students should be putting up what D equals. So I might say, class, what does D equal? And I don't want them to say it, I want them to show me. So I should be seeing everyone in the camera or everyone in person showing me how many fingers. They should have four fingers up. And I would say, class, and then now they would read it. 19 equals three times five plus four. 17 equals three times five plus D. Think about it class fingers, and they should be showing two fingers, class 17 equals three times five plus two. Class, let's move to the blue set. Read it with me. Okay, so again, this is to build anticipation for um, use of variables that are coming up even more and the double step, two step word problems that are coming up in this unit um, in which we'll be putting in a variable. Uh, this is also working on that mental math of multiplication and then obviously addition. So do this, go through it quickly, um, and if students say the wrong number or show the not wrong number of fingers, then you just correct them. D equals, and you say what it is, because three times five equals 15, 15 plus one equals 16. But I would not have kids explain every single problem, there just won't be time for that. But maybe at the end, you could have someone explain one problem from each color, depending on how much of your five minutes is left. So that's the quick video for lessons one to four for quick practice. Okay, so I personally love these quick practices um, in unit four, or excuse me, unit two for grade four, uh, because it really is going to help students understand what's happening as they go into double digit multiplication. So this is lessons five to nine. And when we show the slide with all the problems, uh, there's a couple ways you could do it. It could be you point to the first equation, something like three times four, and students would just say 12 ones equals 12. Okay, then they would point to this one and they'd say, think about it, class, 12 tens equals 120. But that's really only if they are understanding what's happening with these decade numbers. So this one would be class 12 hundreds equals 1,200. But what I find is that students are just quote unquote adding zeros, which is not what's actually happening. So I make them read it like this, three ones times four ones equals class 12 ones. 12 ones equals 12. Three ones, and I, if I were to write it in my really good handwriting right now, <laughs> and four tens, right? Now I think three ones times four tens equals 12 tens because a one times a 10 equals a 10. Three ones times four tens equals 12 tens. And 12 tens is the same as 120. So I'm using my mouse as my pen right now, but you could do that with a stylus or your finger. If you have a touch screen, it would probably look better than mine. Um, and then we have this here. We have three tens, and so I'll just put a T now, and times four tens equals class 12 hundreds. I'm gonna do 12 H because a 10 times a 10 equals a hundred. And 12 hundreds is the same as class 1,200. Then we go again. Five ones times seven ones equals 
35 ones. And 35 ones equals everyone 35. 5 ones times 7 tens equals 35 tens. And how do I know that? Because a 1 times a 10 equals a 10. 35 tens is the same as 350. Okay, so I would be asking students all of those questions. Class, five ones times seven tens equals class, 35 tens. How do I know it's tens? Class, a one times a 10 equals a 10. Class, 35 tens is the same as 350. Class, read it with me. Five tens plus seven tens equals class thirty five hundreds. Class, how do you know? A ten times a ten equals a hundred. Class, what is thirty five hundreds? Three thousand five hundred. So there's a couple ways you could do it. It kind of depends on whether or not students really understood or grasped this concept. Um, in previous lessons. If they really didn't, then just saying three times four class, 12 tens, 12 tens is 120. They don't know why it's tens. Okay, so they do if they did a, uh, a decent job in lesson one, two, um, and three when we're talking about factoring tens, but I think saying it this way is going to help them when they do the area model as well. So there's a couple different ways we can do this, but if we went with the most basic, it would be boys and girls read with me. 23 divided by four, class, hold up the fingers to show the largest whole number quotient. And everyone should show something like this, and I would say class, and they would say five. Boys and girls, four times five equals 20. Boys and girls, how many extra? Think about it, class, three extra. That's right, boys and girls, read the equation as I write it. Four times five equals 20, plus three equals everyone, 23. Boys and girls, read it with me. 42 divided by eight. Boys and girls, what's the largest whole number in the quotient? Think about it. When we see all fingers up, we'll say class, five. Boys and girls, eight times five equals 40. How many would be extra? Think about it. Class, two extra. Boys and girls, say it with me as I write the equation. Eight times five equals 40, plus two equals 42. Boys and girls, 55 divided by nine. Class, what is the largest whole number in the quotient? Think about it. Class, six. Nine times six equals 54. Boys and girls, how many would be extra? Class, one. You start to get the point. Now, I'm saying nine times five equal, or nine times six equals 54 because I want them to have that math fact quickly. Um, you could choose not to do that in the original directions in the slide above this slide. They don't have them restate the equation and give the product. It's all done mentally. But that might be a scaffold you need to give students in the beginning so that they can get to the remainder piece. So slow down any part of that as needed or count by nines if their math facts are really struggling and really um, not very sharp, then you could do no problem, let's count by nines until we get as close to 55 as we can. And then practice those count bys and figure out how many it takes you to get to 55 without going over. Same thing, let's count by eights. So when you're saying class and you're not seeing very many fingers up in the camera or you're only seeing a few in class, whatever it looks like, then say class count with me and we'll add that as a step and we'll do our count bys. So you'll do that for several slides. There's a slide, then each slide it tells you at the bottom um, what lesson number it aligns to. Have fun.